Chapter 1. Intruder Alert And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. We've counted them down from the bottom to the top, but one song remains. In a surprise turn of events that is sure to rock the entire rock and roll world, this week's number one song on American Top 40 is... The DJ's voice exploded in a burst of static. And then, the radio went dead. Dean Muller leaped up from his desk, where he had been listening to the radio while doing his math homework. Come on, you can't quit on me now! At 12 years of age, the freckled-faced boy was an avid American Top 40 listener. So obsessed with tracking the latest pop hits that he kept a detailed logbook noting the weekly ups and downs of his favorite artists, whose posters were plastered across the slanting walls of his attic bedroom. Dean grabbed his radio and shook it. Nothing. He followed the cord to the wall, and it was plugged in. What could possibly be wrong with it? Just as he was about to open the back of the radio to see if he could fix it, he heard something from the speaker. He held it to his ear, and a burst of static nearly imploded his eardrum. He jumped back in surprise, bobbled the radio, and then dropped it. He kicked out his foot at the last second and cushioned its fall, nearly doing the splits in the process. Ow! Just as he was trying to figure out which hurt more, his foot or his ear, a strange electronic tone sounded on his radio, followed by a muffled voice. We interrupt this program to bring you an important message. Scientists at the University of Saskatchewan's Astronomical Observatory have detected a strange atmospheric disturbance over the south-central region of the province. Reports are coming in from numerous communities throughout the area including descriptions of strange floating lights. Anyone who sees such a phenomenon is asked to contact the local authorities immediately. Whatever you do, do not, I repeat, do not approach the lights. Scientists have yet to determine exactly what they are, but they have not ruled out the possibility of extraterrestrial origin or some form of sneak attack by the Russians. We now return to your regular scheduled programming. His interest in that week's top 40, forgotten. Dean winced as he eased himself out of the splits. He turned down the radio and looked out the window. All he saw was his reflection. He switched off his desk lamp and looked out again. Nothing but blackness. He left his bedroom and crept down the stairs, grimacing each time a board creaked. Before he entered the kitchen, he slid his hand around the corner and turned off the lights. He didn't like the darkness, but if anyone, or anything, was lurking outside, it would make it harder to see him. He snatched a note off the table and read it in the dim light of the streetlight shining through the window over the kitchen sink. It confirmed that his parents would not be back until around nine o'clock. They had been gone the entire day in Saskatoon for medical appointments and shopping. That meant, for the next hour, Dean would be all alone in a dark, empty house with aliens or possibly Russian soldiers lurking outside. Dean peeked out the window and was blinded by a flash of light. He ducked, his heartbeat slowing only slightly as he watched headlight beams sweep across the kitchen wall. A false alarm. Or was it? He glanced around for a weapon. He spotted the broom leaning in the corner beside the refrigerator. Too flimsy. His eyes flew to the knife drawer. Too far away. Then he looked at the kitchen island. That's when he spotted it. A meat tenderizer hammer. It was made of wood, but it had a studded metal plate on its face. It would have to do. Crawling across the floor, Dean reached up and grabbed it off the island, careful to keep it out of sight. He clutched the hammer and took a few practice swings. He felt better already. Then he spotted the phone. Of course. His parents were gone, but that didn't mean he had to face down the end of the world on his own. He crawled over to the phone and was about to lift the beige receiver when it rang. Dean yanked his hand back as if he'd been electrocuted. Who could it be? After a moment's hesitation, he knocked the receiver off its cradle and caught it before it hit the floor. Taking a deep breath, he held it to his ear. Uh, hello? Is this Dennis Muller? N no, it's his son, Dean. Is your father home? No. 
What about your mother? Who is this? This is not your concern. Are you alone in the house? Dean glanced around fearfully. I... I think so. What do you mean you think? I mean, I know, yes, I'm all alone. Get out. What? Get out, now, and take nothing with you. Dean looked down at the meat tenderizer hammer. Nothing? Why not? I... Just do as I say. The line went dead. Dean stared at the receiver in shock. Then he dropped it and the hammer and raced for the front door. Dean burst outside, ran a few steps, and then dove beneath the lilac bushes that lined the sidewalk. The musty smell of rotting leaves wafting up from the damp ground as he looked back at his house. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. It just stood there, dark and foreboding. Why had the man on the phone told him to leave? Dean was so caught up in examining his house that he didn't realize the area around him was growing brighter. It was a reflection off the second-story window that first caught his attention. Then he glanced down at the damp grass and saw yellow lights dancing over the dewdrops. Not wanting to look up, but not wanting to be taken out unawares, Dean craned his head toward the sky. That's when he saw them. Strange floating lights, just like the man on the radio had warned. Dean flattened himself against the ground, frozen in fear. He couldn't go back inside. And now the aliens or Russians or whatever they were, were outside. What could he do? Unable to handle the tension any longer, he did whatever any other sensible 12-year-old boy would do in such a situation. He leapt up and ran down the street, screaming like a maniac, Help! That's when he heard it. Laughter. He slowed and then stopped, looking around in confusion. Couldn't the aliens or Russians just get it over with? Did they have to mock him before they incinerated him? Then he realized the laughter didn't sound like Russians or aliens. In fact, it sounded just like... Matt Taylor! Dean exclaimed. Sporting his trademark Edmonton Oilers cap, Dean's friend, Matt Taylor, his older brother Chad, and the fourth member of their tight-knit group, Andrew Lowen, emerged from some nearby bushes, all three of them doubled over with laughter. Dean looked up at the sky and realized the strange floating lights weren't so strange after all. They were hot air balloons made from dry cleaning bags which the boys had learned to make at camp the previous summer. He turned back to his friends who were beginning to recover from their laughing fit. Very funny, guys, very funny, he said. Then he frowned. Wait a second. That was you on the radio? Matt choked back his laughter long enough to respond. Yep. And the phone? Chad held up his hand. Guilty. How the heck did you do that? Still laughing, Matt and Chad pointed at Andrew. Ask him, they said in unison. Andrew held up a black briefcase. Dean stared at it in wonder. What is it? Andrew smiled. Say hello to the hijacker.